Yes, I bought some fabric this weekend. Just what I need. More fabric. But it's so pretty. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and this is my weekly vlog for Monday, June the what is it? June the 17th. Yes, 2019, day after Father's Day. If you celebrate Father's Day uh, yesterday somewhere in the world, then happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, I lost my father a few years ago, so yeah, what can I say? No Father's Day for me. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've been up to this week. So behind me, you can see, you saw this last week. Uh, this is the pineapple quilt that I was talking about but now what's different this week is I now have my borders on and I did mitered corner borders which you probably can't notice uh, on video but they do give it a very nice finished look in fact I think what I'm going to do is on my show quilt that I'm working on and I haven't shown this to you uh, much yet but I will eventually I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to do mitered corners I think they just look a little nicer than the usual ones where you just go around in a square um, I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. Um, I'm liking the colors, how those work. And I did have a compliment from the store owner of Ultimate Sewing, where I take all my classes and buy all my um, fabric, who said, I wouldn't have thought, she said, that white would work as the background for this quilt. But now when I see it all together, it does work. Uh-huh, it does work. Okay get off my high horse here but anyways I am very proud of it that one I think I am going to quilt uh, using long arm which I haven't taken the course yet but once I do um, I think that's going to be one of the quilts I'm actually going to long arm as well and if that turns out okay then I think I might put this in the show um, my guilds show in November I don't know yet I'll wait and see we're allowed to enter up to three pieces so um, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to show and I still have a couple of quilt tops that need to be quilted beyond this one um, so I got to get on with that but I'm waiting until I take the long arm course which is going to be this week on Thursday and um, yeah after that then I'll have a better idea of how I'm going to quilt some of these things okay so what else I haven't been making anything else um, so that takes us to YouTube channel of the week Okay, I give you a little bit of a, a disclaimer here. This is not a YouTube channel about crafting or quilting or things like that. It does have a very heavy um, lean towards the LGBT community and a very heavy lean towards human sexuality. So if you're offended by anything like that, I suggest you don't go to this particular YouTube channel. But here's my review of it anyways. This week's YouTube channel is something a little different and may not be to everyone's taste. This YouTube channel is entitled Into More. That's I-N-T-O-M-O-R-E. And it deals with uh, human sexuality issues and it especially focuses upon the LGBTQ uh, community. But it also has a lot of other wide ranging, sweeping kind of topics, but most of them deal with sexual orientation, sexual identification, um, sexuality in general. Now it's done tastefully, um, but as I said, it may not be for everyone. So take that in mind when you go to this particular site. But I do think you can learn quite a lot from this site as well. So that's Into More YouTube Channel of the Week. So as usual, you'll find the link for that YouTube channel in the notes below. And you'll also find a link for the latest Stephen and Walter Live. And uh, if you didn't catch us on Sunday, you can capture or can catch the replay. And uh, the theme or topic for this past live was um, mental block. Uh, we talked about retirement. Yes. Okay. One of the things that happens in retirement, you lose your memory. Uh, no. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, but anyways, we had some good discussion uh, from people who uh, watch on a regular basis. And 
next week we're going to talk about ageism in our society. Basically, the young versus the old, to put it in a very simplistic way. But there's a whole lot of intricacies to all of that and some interesting things I think we could be discussing. So if you want to join in on the conversation or just listen, that's fine too. Check out Stephen and Walter Live next week and that will be Sunday, June the 23rd at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But the link is below for this week's Stephen and Walter Live. And there's a link below for a new edition of The Idiot Quilter, episode 46. And I went to the Canadian Quilt Show, talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, and I did uh, a little video of pretty much all of the quilts. It was a fairly large show. The video runs about 18 and a half minutes. Um, but you might want to check that out because these quilts are art. Okay, they're art. Um, and they're just... The wow factor is incredible. Um, and I also have a link for this week's book that we'll be coming to in a moment. And um, there's a link to the series I've been running lately on the vlog, 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 vlog um, where I've been working on one of those iCraft kits, the explosion box. The last installment is coming up in this vlog a little later on, but I have taken all of the installments, put them all together into one video so you don't have to actually watch the vlogs uh, to see all of this. It's all in one spot and I've put the link to where that is down below. Okay, so that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. Well, if you remember last week I said I was done with Facebook because I have been hacked twice my, my account disabled and there was no way I could re-enable it at all. Uh, Facebook, I said, was absolutely of no help with that whatsoever. And I kind of thought, I'm way too dependent upon Facebook anyways. I'm tired of seeing what people are eating. Uh, tired of the one-upmanship that Facebook tends to uh, induce in people. And I don't know if induce is the right word for that, but make people think they have to be better than the Joneses. And I'm so tired of all of the mindless advertising that happens on there. So I thought, good riddance to Facebook, maybe this is a good thing. What am I pissed off about? I'm back on Facebook. Why? I don't know. But I am. Why? Because I felt left out. I mean, when we went to the quilt show on the last week, um, we found out that there is a group for men quilters and they have retreats once a year and the whole bit. Um, but the only way to get in contact with them is to join their Facebook group. Well, when we came home, Walter joined it through his, but it's not the same as, you know, having my own Facebook on it. So I did a workaround to get back on and uh, uh, this is kind of a long story, so I'm going to keep it really short. Needless to say, someone had created a an account that had a different name, but it had my last name, but not my first name, and it was female. And for some reason, I could get into it by using my own passwords. So that's really weird. And it's been hanging on for quite a while. This is not something that's just newly popped up. It's been there for probably a year or more. I went into it and I checked it all out, and whoever set this up, there is no content in it whatsoever. They haven't put in any bio information. They haven't have, they don't have any friends listed. They don't have any posts, no pictures, nothing. It's blank slate. And I tried to get rid of it uh, from my own account several times and thought I had, but then it reappears. So I don't get this. So out of curiosity, I went in again to see if I could get into it. I could, no problem. So I thought, all right, since I cannot get into my other two accounts that have been um, disabled. Maybe I can use this one. So I went in, I edited the name, I edited everything in it. So now it's all set up for me. I had to send out friends requests again. This is the third time. I did send out an email to a lot of people letting them know that this was genuinely from me. Um, and here's why. Uh, so slowly I'm rebuilding my friends list. And uh, I added some content. But this time I went in and looked at the security settings. And I went through everything. So now I think I have it f very secured. And I've got something called two-factor authentication on this one. 
where basically if somebody tries to get into my account that is not me, I get a notification uh, for this and uh, I can block them or keep them from getting into it, which is good. Plus, I have a way of recovering if I ever get disabled again. You can set up three friends, trusted friends, who I guess, I don't know what they have to do, but they can do something. That would be in the most extreme cases, but never say never because it was pretty extreme for me these two times. So what's pissing me off is I'm still hooked on Facebook. I mean, it isn't something that I check constantly, and I don't write a lot of messages on Facebook. Um, but that's what's pissing me off. I still felt when I didn't have it for about a week that I was missing out. And I think that's the secret behind Facebook. It gets you hooked. It gets you involved in a community. It puts you in touch with all kinds of people and events and groups and things like that. And basically, if you don't have Facebook, you pretty much figure you can't survive. And I know logically you can. We survived without Facebook years ago. We survived with a lot of things we have now that we didn't have years ago. You know, like mobile phones, personal computers, all that kind of thing. So yes, we would survive without Facebook. But for some reason, I just didn't feel right about not having it. I felt out of the loop. And that was one of the things I think I... I said last week in my rant about Facebook is that you know you have to feel that you have to be part of something and it makes you feel that way so yeah I'm pissed off that I am uh, I have I have an addiction to Facebook um, just like many many other people but I have it back up and I'm pissed off that I feel good that I have it back up <laughs> and I'm a little worried that it will get hacked again but I'm hoping not so anyways, yeah, I'm my own worst enemy, I suppose. Okay, moving on. Um, what did I buy new this week? Well, I bought a new rotary cutter. It's an ergonomically correct one, they call it. And I forgot to bring it out with me. So if you just give me a moment, I'm going to get it. So here it is. It's a weird looking sucker. But it's fantastic for several reasons it's ergonomically created so if you've got arthritis in your fingers or whatever this is much easier to use than the standard one that you go like this all you do is you put your hand on here you put your finger on the top of this and away you go it cuts like butter uh, that may be because it's a brand new blade too um, now this is only a 45 millimeter I usually use 60 millimeter but I got this but I am loving this and the thing about this too was the price really good it was about $23 Canadian and I got free shipping two-day shipping with Prime on it as well you can pay well if you go to a place like Michaels and you buy an Olfa which is the the name in these kind of things rotary cutters you can pay up to like $70 for a 60 millimeter one and the replacement blades aren't cheap although I can get them off of Amazon and get them at a much better price and they've worked out pretty good with this but it's got a safety control on it this little thing here when you press it down don't do that I'll cut into the paper anyways it pops up off the blade here and when you're finished with it you just flick the little button and it closes it right up so I am very happy with this purchase okay what else did I buy let me check my notes um, at the quilt show I did buy some fabric and some other things so I thought I'd show you the fabric now you saw at the beginning my little teaser showed these these are fat quarters. I love the way they fold them though. I mean, when you see them and they're all laid out, you know, um, on a table, all these colors that are here, uh, you just want to buy them all. And I did. Well, not all. Well, I bought a lot of them, as you can see. I think I have 11 half square or 11 fat quarters here. Um, and I love the colors in them. Uh, here's the other ones as you can see the purples the blues into the pinks these all will coordinate very nicely together in a project as well but I just think they're so cute the way that they folded them up great marketing ploy 
I also bought some strip packages. This one, this is five fat quarters in this one, it's not strips, but try to keep the glare off it. I just love the colors and the patterns that are in this. These are a batik, I think. It doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure they're batiks. And same with these. These are a strip pa pack of um, batiks. And now machine cut, which means it's going to be more accurate in your width. But nice little package here of these. And they weren't bad for price. This one was $31.95, and I'm talking Canadian dollars. And this one was $27.95. And I'm not sure how much these were a piece, but I think they might have been $4 a piece or something like that. So that's all really that I bought at the Canadian quilt show. Um, the reason being is everybody had the same fabric pretty much and prices weren't all that great. Like there weren't any deep down discounts on any of this stuff. And in fact, in most cases, uh, buying fabric there would have cost me more than buying fabric at my local uh, sewing center so you know and they have really good pr prices at ultimate sewing they what fourteen dollars a meter uh, that's really good uh, these other places were selling them eighteen nineteen twenty dollars a meter and it's the same fabric I can get at ultimate sewing so why bother um, I did look at kits and things but I stay away from kits because I've got several kits that I haven't done yet and I've had them for over a year so really I'm trying to get to those projects before I get more projects. But that's the problem with quilting. There's so many neat patterns, so much nice fabric. You, you know, you're like a squirrel. You just get in there and go start with one project and you wanna move right over to another project and back and forth. You gotta get a grip or you get nothing done. So speaking of patterns and things, on the way home, we stopped at a um, quilting store in Coburg, which is a place about 45 minutes east of me and uh, we've been there before but every time we go it's been like on a long weekend and they've been closed on the Saturday on the long weekend so this was during the week on our way back from Ottawa so we thought we would drop in really nice store great selection of fabrics in there prices a little bit more on the fabric than I pay at ultimate sewing but they had some nice stuff and um, they had some patterns and I saw this one and it's for a table runner it's called triangle frenzy swirl and uh, it makes I don't know if you can see that or not in the bottom but that's basically the kind of things that makes but it uses a special ruler a 60 degree equilateral triangle uh, ruler so I bought one this is the little sucker here wasn't too bad in price the rulers are expensive well $35.99, you know, but rulers, that's about the going price, uh, especially when you get into these specialty rulers. Um, so I've got that, I've got the pattern, so I just have to look at my fabric choices and give this a try. Um, it looks really cool, plus it's learning how to use this because there are other projects where you use this type of triangle ruler as well, so it's not a one-off. Um, okay. So I think that's about all that I bought. Did I miss anything? Nope. That's everything that I bought. So that takes us to this week's book. And this week's book is Designing with Vellum. Now, if you don't know what vellum is, it basically is a type of paper that's somewhat, uh, well, it's kind of translucent. Um, you can get it in different finishes. Um, it's, it's not an easy thing to work with. It looks really cool on a scrapbook page or on a card or in a background on an art journal page, but it also, things show through it, including your adhesive. So a lot of people don't know what to do with vellum. So that's where this book comes in. It shows you what to do with vellum and it talks about ways to adhere it so that you're and how to hide your um, glue shows you how to use it in scrapbook pages and on cards and other things so this is a really great book that will take the mystery out of working with vellum um, now it's called designing with vellum 
It's by Robin Johnson. It says over 150 ideas for scrapbooks, card making, gifts, and more. And I did buy it some time ago, quite a long time ago. $24.99 Canadian is what I paid for it. So of course, I went to Amazon and I looked it up. And what did I find? Okay, not cheap. To buy it brand new, they're asking on Amazon.ca $50.71, double the price that I paid for it originally. I didn't see any listings for it as a used book. However, if you plug in this title for this book and this author, uh, you might find it somewhere else. Maybe on eBay. I don't go on eBay. Um, where you might get it a little cheaper. I don't think it's worth 50 bucks. 25, okay, maybe. If I could get it for less than that, even better. Because I am sure I can go onto YouTube and find videos showing me how to use vellum. But at the time I bought this book, I wasn't really on YouTube. That's how long ago it probably was. Um, but again, if you've got some vellum or you've heard about using vellum, it's been around for a long time, you might want to invest in something like this um, so you can get the most use out of that product. Because vellum is not, not terribly expensive. You usually buy it by the sheet, but it, it tends to be pricier than just ordinary cardstock. Okay, so the link for this, of course, is in the show notes below. And what's that take us to? I'm going to cough. Excuse me. I still have this lingering cough, which I don't know what it is, if it's allergies or whatever, but I've still got it. So let's see. That takes us to works in pro progress. So we've been working on the explosion box uh, from the kit by iCraft. And last week I showed you, there are three boxes that I made from that kit. I showed you how I decorate one box in sort of a grungy, steampunky kind of uh, style. This week, uh, and this will be the last installment on uh, the explosion box, I show you how I decorate the other box that I had covered in the Graphic 45 paper. Now, as I mentioned, there's other ways you can decorate these little boxes. So I took the box that was made out of the black paper and I put the Art Nouveau kind of um, Graphic 45 on all the parts of it. And then I got myself some of those iCraft flowers and I really love the iCraft flowers. They are paper, but they're very moldable and uh, they're very inexpensive. So what I did was I just took a variety of these and sort of collaged them on the sides. Oops, I got a little glue here on the side. There must have been something on my mat. Anyways, so you can see I've put um, a little bit of this, little of these flowers on each side. Yeah, I definitely set my box in wet glue. Not good. Anyways, let's carry on. So opening up the lid, the inside of the box now, of course, just like the other one, we have a series of, or a couple of drawers, and I just put in little things on here that people can either write on or put pictures on or do whatever they want. There's one here as well. And then, of course, in each of these drawers is one of the little booklets right here. And I made it the same way as I made it on the steampunk punk box. It's just an accordion fold. And I just cut out from the paper some interesting graphics and used the Tim Holtz uh, little um, saying stickers, whatever those are called. Um, something words, can't remember. Anyways, and put those together. Reinforced my ribbon on the back. And this just ties up. So it's just a, a little something in the drawer. And there's actually room in the drawers to put possibly little tiny pictures or little keepsakes uh, underneath or on top of these little books. Or they can take these little books out completely. That would be up to the individual who receives this explosion box. I'm just getting my bow done here. And it just drops right back into that little drawer. And so this all shuts up just like that. Put our lid on and we're good to go. So that takes us to the end of this series on putting together the iCraft exploding boxes. And uh, this is the one you saw in the last segment. 
there is a third box this box now this is the one if you remember i um sprayed on the sharpie ink using my um e-brush and um I kind of like it just the way it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do any further embellishing of this box. I'm just going to keep it in reserve. And this might make a great little quickie gift um, where I could personalize it for the person I might be giving it to. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. So there we go. We have our little boxes all done. So as I said, that's the last in that particular series and if you've enjoyed it but you'd rather see it all as one video without it being part of my vlog i have put all the pieces of each segment together in one video and you'll find those uh that listing for that whole video in the show notes below next week we're going to start a new icraft uh project and this one is called the box scrapbook um, I have not even opened this package yet to see what's in it, so we'll do that next week and figure out how basically it goes together and we'll work from it there. I am really enjoying doing these iCraft uh, kits, I can tell you, and there's still many more to come. Um, I think I bought them all, uh, but they are a lot of fun. They can be a little tricky at first when you first start doing them, but I have found with each kit that I make from this series, um, I'm, I'm getting more used to the way they have been designed so I know how to fold them properly. So this is for next week then. Okay, so that takes us to events in the past week, an update on my mother, she's getting teeth. They came in, they did the impressions and in about two or three weeks she should have her dentures. And then I will have to get ready for a whole new realm of complaining from my mother because yeah, they won't fit right, they'll make her mouth sore, they're a pain in the butt, blah, 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 blah. But I'm prepared for that. So anyways, and also I got a call from the nursing home administration. Apparently there was a little mistake made on my mother's account. Um, there's different levels of rates that you pay per month for the nursing home. There's basic semi-private, private. But those rates are also governed by the age of the home. So this is where it gets very difficult to figure out what you are actually paying each month. Because for example, if they're in what they call a bed before 2012, that a room that was hasn't been updated since 2012, I guess. I don't really understand it. It all has to do with improvements. So there's sort of a, a gradiated, gradiated? graduation graduated scale that's the word I want for these prices now of course every July 1st um, the government sets a new rate <coughs> so it usually goes up it doesn't go down it doesn't go up by a lot like one point something percent something like that whatever um, but I have noticed that my mother started in a basic room and then after three rooms later she ended up in a semi-private and that's where she's been ever since but i did notice that she was being charged the same for the basic as for the se as even though she was in a semi-private i didn't really question it because i thought well yeah it probably has to do with the age of this room or whatever and so you know and i figured that if they wanted more money they'd let me know about that and they did this phone call was that they were doing some auditing of their books and had realized that since my mother moved into the semi-private room, they'd only been charging her basic. Okay, yep. So I said, yeah, I kind of wondered about that, but, you know, I was a little confused about your chart. They did explain the chart to me a little bit more, so I do understand it now. So my mother owes them about $1,800 more, and that's just going to come off with the next month's rent. So not a, not a problem. Um, I think I got my mother a little worried about her money because I told her about this, but I said to her, mom, there's no, you don't have to worry about anything. It's all looked after. It's okay. You're fine. You know, don't worry about it. And she is, I look after her money. Everything's fine. Um, but you know, it's always something with the nursing home. So there you go. Um, so as I said, we went to the Canadian quilt show, uh, this week week, and I have a link to the video that I made there, but this is the catalog for it 
and um, I haven't really sat down and perused it yet, but I will. But I got this, it's five dollars for the catalog, but it talks about all the quilts that were there. But you know, just as a form of inspiration, Aziz quilts were absolutely beautiful. Um, some of them you knew people had spent a long, long time on them as well. I don't think I will ever get to that level. Um, but they were beautiful to see. Okay, so the other thing we did when we were in Ottawa, uh, Ottawa is about four hours east of us. Uh, we drove up, we got there around noon, we went to the quilt show, we spent several hours there. Uh, then we went and checked into our hotel room, which was not a hotel room it, as such. It was the University of Ottawa. It's one of their um, residences, which they open up in the summer and like a hotel. So it's kind of no frills, no thrills. Um, it's clean, it's basic, you have your beds, you have your bathroom and everything and, and a television. So, and they have good Wi-Fi there as well. And it's, it, it's a lot cheaper. It was about $130 a night. Now that's even expensive for a university room because we stay in a university residence uh, when we go uh, to the west of us to do some quilt shopping and, and things like that. And we stay at a college there and it's no frills, no thrills too, but it's about 90 bucks a night and they include breakfast with it. This place did not. So it's a little bit better deal. But anyways, the hotels in, in Ottawa, Walter looked into them and everything was booked. And we'll, I'll tell you why in a second. But uh, anything that wasn't booked was like $600 a night. Well, we weren't spending that. Uh, we were staying two nights. So the reason Ottawa was so busy that weekend was there were so many things going on in Ottawa. One, it is a tourist attraction and, and we're moved into tourist season now here in our country, summer kind of thing. Um, everybody wants to see the Parliament building, so you've got all that traffic. But it is a destination for grade 8 graduation uh, trips. I guess it's very trendy these days for the grade 8s to have a graduation trip. And oftentimes, in our area, they take them to Ottawa. Sue, guess who is staying in our hotel while we were there? All these bloody grade 8 kids. In fact, we got booked, checked in got into our room and just ahead of these bus loads and I mean bus loads of these kids and um, we're sitting in the room we had just sort of got ourselves organized and whatnot and we're getting ready to go out and suddenly our door opens and there's these four boys four kids and a teacher standing there we're all looking at each other like deer in headlights like what are you doing here so And their key opened our room. Well, apparently the first thing they said, well, you're in the wrong room. I said, no, you're in the wrong room. And our key opened the door. So I said to them, okay, well, I'll go down and straighten this out. So I went down to the front desk and told this story to the young lad that was working behind the counter. And they're all university students there. And I don't know if they do it as a summer job or whether they're part of a hospitality course or something. And, you know, this is a practicum for them. I don't know what. But they're a little disorganized, okay? Anyways, this this was the young man that checked us in only a half an hour before. Told him what the problem was. And he looks it up and he says, what's the last name? And I gave him Walter's last name because it was under Walter's name. And uh, he says, oh, yeah. Oh, the reason um, that they got into your room or that is because do you realize that uh, you've missed checkout time? No, we have not missed checkout time. We just got here and just checked in with you. And he looks at me and goes, oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Now he might have been confused because Walter did the checking in and I was just standing off to the side. So here I was the one and Walter wasn't with me because he stayed up in the room in case they could get back in. We didn't really want them ransacking through our stuff. Um, so he looked at me and he profusely apologized. He says, oh, I'm so sorry. He says, I meant to give you 1112, not 1102. And I said to him, okay, I get that. He says, I suppose you're all unpacked and everything now. And I says, no, we didn't bring that much stuff with us. If you want us to move to 1112, we can do that. And I'm thinking in my mind, might be a little further down the hall away from all these kids. And it was. Um, so I said, no problem. So I said, just, it's weird that our key 
open the door and their key opens the door. And he said, uh, it probably doesn't open it now. So he says, I'll give you a key for that room so you can get back in to get your stuff and everything. Sure enough, he was right. Um, our keys didn't work anymore. So it must be an automated system or something. However, they do that um, after the checkout time. So anyways, we got resituated in the other room. In the meantime, when I was going down in the elevator, there were some of these kids there as well. So I'm talking to them. I said, so grade eight graduation. And they go, oh yeah, and everything. And I said, so where are you from? And they said, Whitby. Well, Whitby's the town I grew up in. It's right next door to the town I live in now. And of course, I went to high school there and I taught there as well. And I said, well, I said, I'm a retired teacher. And so I told them and they knew the school and everything like that. And the one kid immediately had to tell me his mother was a teacher, his grandmother was a teacher, all this kind of stuff. Actually, they seemed like nice enough kids, but they're kids and kids are loud. Okay, simple as that. But really, with the exception of the burnt popcorn in the microwave, because the rooms had microwaves and little fridges um, that we were smelling for the rest of the weekend, yeah, they were okay. But everywhere you went in Ottawa, they were there. These kids were everywhere. Um, the other thing about Ottawa as well, which is kind of shameful, I think, it's our nation's capital. And right by the capital where all the tourists will be in the whole bit, there's a whole lot of what I call sketchy people. Okay, they're homeless people, they're people in the streets, they're people that have drug problems, um, alcohol problems. One woman had a sign that was kind of sad. She's sitting on the side of the road smoking a cigarette, looks about six months pregnant and has a sign. I'm pregnant, help me. Okay, so does that paint the picture for you? And what I find very sad about that is, yes, in our country, we have those people. Although we have a very, very efficient welfare system in our country to help people like this, nevertheless, we still have this kind of thing. And every big city in the world, I think, has this problem as well. Except maybe Singapore. I never noticed it in Singapore. Singapore is very clean. But anyways, I digress. <coughs> Excuse me, cough. So I just think it's kind of disgraceful that our capital looks like that. Um, we were staying about six blocks away from the parliament buildings and even that neighborhood took a, uh, a great change. We were kind of in a sketchy area. Uh, yeah. So it didn't stop us from doing anything, but I just felt it was a little sad and not a good representation of our country. But as I said, every city has this problem. Um, so we did go to the Canadian National Art Gallery. Now, this is something that could have been a piss me off segment. The museums in Ottawa, there was a day and age when I was a kid where all the national museums were free to Canadians. Okay? It might have been free too for people that weren't Canadians. Not anymore. You have to pay. I think they eventually reduced it to one day a week you could get in for nothing. And I don't even think that exists anymore. Yes, yeah, our tax dollars not at work. Okay? So we went to the National Art Gallery. That cost us $24 a piece. Well, it's 16 general admission, but they had a special exhibit area that cost extra, and that was on... Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've hacked up a lung now. I'm okay. Sorry about that. So as I was saying, uh, the museums used to be free. Not anymore. It was $24 for us to get into the National Art Gallery. Uh, and it was 24 because it was another, an extra, what would that be? 24, do math here, uh, for $8. $8 more from the general admission to see the um, Gauguin exhibition. So we figured we're here, we might as well. So we did. Actually, the art gallery is huge, huge. We spent a couple of hours there. And we're not the kind of people that stand back and look at every piece and go, ooh, what's this symbolic of? And I don't even read the little cards beside most of them. So, you know, we kind of went through it in a whirlwind. And it still took us a couple of hours. Um, so anybody who's truly, truly um, into art, you would definitely enjoy uh, the National Art Gallery. So if you're ever in Ottawa, I really recommend that you go to the National Art Gallery. It is worth the money. And the building itself is spectacular uh, too in its design. Very modern looking. Um, 
So you'll get a little glimpse of that and of what we see. I put together a video. I'm sorry it's a little on the long side and I debated whether I should include it in my vlog. Um, but I decided that's where it should go. So I mean if it's not your cup of tea just fast forward through it. But here it is. So this is the National Art Gallery. Thought you'd like to see some of the things we'll see today in Ottawa. Um, unfortunately, there's all these cars parked in front of it, so I'm not getting a very good shot of it. Well, when we get further up, we get a little better here. There's a lot of uh, school kids here these days because they're all doing their grade 8 graduation trips, which Ottawa is a favorite destination for we that. We kind of forgot about that. Yeah, we kind of forgot about that, so we've got a hotel full of them. Well, that's what we get for staying in no thrills, no thrills. So this is a little better shot here of what it looks like. Yes. So off in the distance, you can see the Parliament buildings. That's kind of the back side of them. Uh, the one big tower, of course, is the Peace Tower. And the one just off to the right-hand side there, that is actually the library. Big pointy cone. Yeah, with the big pointy cone. That's the library, the Victorian library. I forget what they actually call the library. There's a name, but besides library. And here's the art gallery. Working on the giant spider. That, according to Walter, has always been here, so they must be fixing it or something. So we'll go inside. So we're inside the gallery right now. We're actually, we're walking up to where the display is, and we decided to opt for the ticket that gets you to see the Gauguin uh, exposition as well. There was a time when museums and things in Ottawa were free to Canadians, but they're not anymore. So we still have to pay $24 each to get in here. That's general admission and the Gauguin. And here's another shot of the back of the Parliament buildings. You can see that the art gallery is strategically placed for a good view of that. Now, Ottawa has a lot of green space in it as well. A lot of people like to bicycle here. And here's leading into the galleries. A little coffee shop area down in here. It's an impressive building in many ways. <laughs>
contemporary art exhibition at the moment. Looks like there's a class and figure drawing going on in that one.
perspective of the gallery from the second floor.
So that takes us to what's coming up in the week. And as I said, on Thursday, we're going off to um, our long arm class. And I'm looking forward to that. And we got really excited about possibly buying a long arm because Janome has just come out with a new one that is a little smaller. So it would fit in our environment. And the price point was really good. Um, but then we did a little bit more research. And when I say we, I mean Walter did a little bit more research and found that a few other things that we would want on it were going to cost a fair amount more money. And then we we talked to a lady at this place we went to in Coburg, the fabric shop that I mentioned. I think it was called Stitch Witch. Um, and she's a long arm specialist as well. And she told us some of the ins and outs about long arms uh, features that we might want to consider. And so this little one isn't looking so good anymore. Um, so we're going to hold off. And when we go for the long arm class, we're going to ask some questions because the lady that teaches that at Swirls and Twirls, um, or is it Twirls and Swirls? One or the other. Um, she is also a, a, a specialist in long arms and um, I'm sure she can give us some more information. I don't know if we're going to buy a long arm anytime soon. <clears throat> I got all excited about this new one from Janome. And I was prepared to almost say to the people there, wrap it, I'm taking it with me. Glad I didn't because you don't want something called long arm remorse. Okay, uh, That's when you buy one and figure out that ooh, it doesn't do everything you want to do or there's others that do things better. So it's going to take more research for this. Also. I can rent long arm time for $30 an hour to finish up quilts like this one at the back once I've taken the certification course which we're taking on Thursday. So I'm just going to hold off and I'm going to do that for a while and see how comfortable I get with it and then from there we can make a more educated decision. It's a lot of money to put out on, on a, a device like this so you really don't want long arm remorse. You want to get the most bang for your buck and something you're going to be happy with because you're going to be stuck with it. Um, and trying to resell a long arm that you don't like, um, I have heard, is not really that easy. So we're just holding off, you know, take a breath. Don't get that excited about it. Plus, I really still feel I need to uh, get closer to mastering doing quilting on my domestic machine. And I have been doing a little practice and I am getting better at it. I'm still far away from being Angela Walters. I can tell you that. If you don't know who Angela Walters is, you can look her up. She's a guru in free motion uh, quilting. So we're just holding off on that. So that's coming up on Wednesday, the long arm course. And today we have to do a little trip to the i uh, to uh, iTunes, not the iTunes, the um, Apple Store, because I have a little problem with my iPhone 10. I don't know if it'll show it up here, but it's warped. It's warped. It's bent. And it's coming, the screen is kind of loosened off on the side. It's still under the two year warranty that we paid extra money for, but we have to go to a place that's about 50 minutes away from us that has the nearest Apple store to us and go in and see what they're going to do for me with this. I'm thinking they may give me they may just exchange the phone. Um, they're usually pretty good if you have problems uh, with any of their products. So we'll see how good this warranty is on the whole thing. I don't know why it's gotten warped. <clears throat> the thing is pretty substantial. It's in my pocket just like every, where everybody else keeps their phone. So I have no idea why it's done this. I mean, yeah, sometimes it's a little difficult getting it out of my pocket, but it's not like I'm taking a steel bar and trying to bend it in half when I do that. So I don't know. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So we'll see what they say at the Apple store. So that's our adventure today. I may get to a sewing class today. I may not. Uh, this sewing class is still going on, but I'm done. Um, today is the last class. So I can take another project in and I have prepared another project for that. But then Walter's had about going the only day this week that we could actually go up to the Apple store is today. So I have a feeling I'm not going to make the class, but that's okay. I'm done already. I'll just send them a text message to let them know that I'm not coming. Okay. So I think that's the week. So Stephen and Walter live um, this coming Sunday. 
which will be what, June the 23rd, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and our theme this week, so you can think about it, uh, is ageism and what that means to you and if you've ever experienced ageism, um, that kind of thing. The old versus the young. Okay, have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.